All of Abraham's experiences up to the end of chapter fourteen were outward, being concerned with outward blessing, care, and supply. When Abraham went down to Egypt, God took care of him outwardly, giving him cattle and servants. The victory that he won against the four kings was also outward. Even what Melchizedek had brought to Abraham was outward. Everything that Abraham had experienced to that point was outward. Before hearing this, you might have thought that at the end of chapter fourteen. Abraham must have been on the peak of his experience of God. Yes, in a sense, he was on the peak, but it was the peak of the elementary stage of his experience. All that Abraham had experienced prior to chapter fifteen was elementary. At the beginning of chapter fifteen, God came in to turn him to an advanced stage in experiencing God. Knowing grace for the fulfillment of God's purpose. Genesis chapter fifteen verse one says, "After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram; I am thy shield, and thy exceedingly great reward." When God came in to speak these words, Abraham was still in an elementary stage. After his slaughter of the kings, a strong enmity had been created between him and the people who belonged to those kings. When Abraham was fighting the battle against the enemy, he was bold and brave. But after gaining the victory and going home, he might have said to himself, "What have I done? Those people might come back. What should I do then?" I only have three hundred and eighteen men, and they have many more than that. Abraham began to be afraid. Many times we are the same as Abraham. When we are in faith, we are bold, saying Hallelujah to the Most High God, the Possessor of heaven and earth. I have lifted up my hand to Him. After gaining the victory and shouting hallelujahs in the meetings, you go home and begin to consider, saying to yourself, "What have I done? What shall I do if the enemy returns?" When God appeared to Abraham in fifteen one, He said, "Fear not." God said this to Abraham indicates that Abraham was fearing his enemies. God seemed to be telling him, "Abraham, you don't need to fear. I am your shield." Be at peace. I am also your exceedingly great reward. Abraham, still being in an elementary stage at the time, was concerned about two things: that his enemies might return to fight against him, and that he still had no child of his own. Abraham might have said, "Look at me. I am old. Look at my wife. She is nearly out of function. We still don't have a child." Lord, don't you know we are getting old in years? When will you give us a child? When God appeared to him, Abraham was concerned about these two things. In the presence of God, we cannot hide our intention. If we are given the opportunity, we shall sooner or later utter whatever is in our heart. Therefore, in chapter fifteen, verse two, Abraham said, "Lord God." What will thou give me? See, I go childless, and the son of possession of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. The next word that Abraham spoke to the Lord was not very polite. He said, "Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, a son of my house is my heir." Abraham seemed to be saying, "Lord." I go childless because you have never given me a child. You must bear the blame for this. Why do I go childless? Because you have never given me a child. Now you come to tell me that you are my great reward. What's the use of your giving me a reward if I have no child? Abraham told the Lord that a son of his house, who was Eliezer of Damascus, would be his heir. In David's new translation. The footnote says that the son of my house means one of his domestics. This indicates that Eliezer must have come from Damascus. It might have been that when Abraham was passing through Damascus, he obtained him here. That 
None of us has ever answered God's call in a clean-cut way. We all dragged our feet through mud and water. Abraham even suffered two deaths, the death of his elder brother Haran and his father Terah. Eventually, Abraham answered God's calling, being unable to avoid it any longer. He left Haran, where he had been called the second time, taking Lot along with him, and passed through Damascus, where he picked up Eliezer. When the Lord appeared to Abraham, saying that he was Abraham's shield and great reward, Abraham seemed to say in reply, "Lord God." I go childless because you have not given me a child, the one whom I intend to have as the heir and possessor of my house, must be my domestic servant, Eliezer. The Lord said to Abraham, "This shall not be thy heir, but he that shall come forth out of thy own bowels shall be thy heir." The Lord seemed to be saying to Abraham, "I didn't care for Lot, neither do I care for this one." There must be a seed born out of yourself, not one of your domestics. Then the Lord said to him, "Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them." And he said unto him, "So shall thy seed be." It was at this juncture that Abraham believed in the Lord. Verse six says that he believed in the Lord. And he counted it to him for righteousness. Abraham's believing was counted to him by the Lord as righteousness. And at that time, Abraham was justified. This is justification by faith. Abraham's having a seed was absolutely not an outward matter, but altogether an inward one. Abraham tried to make this an outward matter, for Eliza was something outside of him. Not something out of him. We need to see the difference here. Today, not many Christians care for the inward experience. Most Christians care for the outward experiences. The things that are taught about Christians today mostly go as far as the end of Genesis fourteen. Some may argue with this, saying, "Don't they have justification by faith?" And is this not in chapter fifteen? Yes. They do have justification by faith, but even this has been made by them an outward thing.